We don't know about you, but we all ran to the theater to see Birds of Prey as soon as it opened. And now that we have, we have a few questions left over. The biggest one on everyone's mind was, who exactly is Victor Zaz? The mysterious character is super important to the plot, but we don't learn all that much about him in the movie. If you're still wondering who Victor Zaz is and what exactly he's hiding, stay tuned because we have all the answers for you. Of course, we need to warn you that if you haven't seen Birds of Prey yet, there are going to be some spoilers in this video. We won't go too deep into the plot, but we can't really talk about Zaz without giving away a few key details. So if you want to go in totally spoiler-free, then proceed with caution. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. When Chris Messina showed up at the 2019 Golden Globes with platinum blonde locks, it threw the internet into a bit of a frenzy. And no, the actor wasn't just determined to shake the image of him as Danny Castellano in The Mindy Project, or out himself as the real Slim Shady. He was actually sporting a look that we now know was for his Birds of Prey character, Victor Zaz. Unless you're familiar with the Batman comics, you might not know that Victor Zaz actually goes way back with the Caped Crusader, and is one of his most dangerous enemies. He first appeared in the 1992 comic series Batman Shadow of the Bat, in which he had dug himself a tunnel out of Arkham Asylum, which allowed him to leave every night in order to go into Gotham and wreak his particular breed of mayhem. While in there, he had also managed to brainwash the new head of the asylum, Jeremiah Arkham, and turn him into a servant of Zaz's. See, Zaz is a little more ruthless than some of the other baddies that have appeared in the comic books over the years. While he is always a henchman working for a more influential boss, he sets himself apart for his sheer love of disposing of others. Some years after he first appeared, we got to discover what exactly made Zaz tick and where it was that he came from. Long before he became the lethal person we know today, he was a wealthy businessman by the age of 25. After both of his parents passed away in a tragic accident, he spiraled downward and developed a terrible gambling addiction. Over time, he gambled away his entire fortune to the Penguin in Gotham Casino. And then, while he was already in the middle of a pretty serious quarter-life crisis, he was almost ready to end it all until he was attacked by a homeless person in the streets of Gotham. In this moment, he became convinced that all life was completely meaningless, and as a, well, what he believed to be reward for showing him the truth, he took his first victim. After that, Zaz believed that every person he did away with, he was actually helping by relieving them of the burden of living this meaningless life. As he put it, his new mission in life was to help those poor beasts shuffle off this mortal coil. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. Are we ready? So, not exactly the guy you want to invite to your party. Because the weapon that that first man used to attack him with was a knife, Zaz has since wheeled knives as his weapon of choice, which he will use up close and personally if he can, but doesn't mind throwing them at his opponents if need be. Oh yeah, and we forgot to mention, Zaz also has the charming habit of making a cut on his skin for every new life he takes. Now, as the years have gone by, he has over 143 scars on his body, one for each person he has, quote unquote, liberated. And in a predictably disturbing turn of events, his prey of choice is usually young women, though he won't be all that picky given any other options. In one storyline in the comic books, Batman must actually fake his own insanity in order to be committed to Arkham Asylum and fight Zaz from the inside. Birds of Prey won't be the first time that we've actually seen Zaz come to life outside of the pages of the comic books. He spent a few seasons on TV's Gotham, played by the amazing Anthony Kerrigan, who you might know from his stand-up performance on HBO's Barry. Over the course of Gotham, Zaz starts out as the most lethal henchman of mob boss Carmine Falcone, who bursts onto the screen following the order to collect Jim Gordon. He goes on to align with Oswald Cobblepot, aka The Penguin, after Falcone retires. Back in the world of the comic books, it isn't until much later that Zaz crosses paths with Black Mask, who we see him teamed up with in Birds of Prey. 
As an inmate at Arkham, he is actually forced to work for Black Mask before making his way up until he becomes one of the Mask's most trusted agents. At this point, he is allowed complete freedom to do whatever he wants and a pile of money to help him do whatever that may be. What he chooses to do is just as mellow and even-keeled as you might expect. He actually starts up a gladiator-style arena in which children are forced to fight each other in hand-to-hand -hand combat and then fight him. While we might not be seeing a child fighting ring and birds of prey, we definitely get a few good glimpses into exactly who Zaz is and what his relationship with Black Mask is really like. In the movie, the pair go beyond the usual boss and henchman dynamic. Way beyond. In fact, it's clear that they are completely devoted to each other. And that is especially so when it comes to Zaz's feelings for Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask. But apparently, that wasn't always the case. In the original script, Zaz was written as much more of a stereotypical hired goon who just followed Sionis around and obeyed his orders. Yet, during rehearsals, the two really discovered their relationship and just how devoted to Sionis Zaz actually is. According to Chris Messina, he says that his version of Zaz is obsessed with Roman. He says, Roman is like the Pied Piper. He's so charming and funny and powerful. And when he turns, he's very violent. And Victor is in love with that. While he might be using the term in love to simply describe his admiration for Roman's violent streak, the two actors have been open, and yet not, about the fact that their characters might actually be more than friends. Ewan McGregor said that they have a desire for more in their relationship and that they are probably gay. This might sound like progress in the comic movie universe, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. See, there have been too many instances over the years of straight actors winking at audiences about their characters' supposed sexuality while never actually exploring it in the movie, which is pretty much what's happening in this case. Some members of the community felt as though it's just another case of a big movie trying to bait them with the possibility of this happening and then once again not delivering when it comes down to brass tacks. There's no denying the tension between these two, and the fact that it never actually comes to light is just kind of frustrating. There's also a long history of what is known as queer coding villains in big Hollywood movies, and tons of Disney classics, in which we know that the bad guys are the bad guys because they exhibit supposedly gay behavior and looks. It's everywhere, and once you start to see it, it's hard to look away. Think about Scar, or Hades from Hercules, or Ursula, or Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective, or Governor Governor Radcliffe from Pocahontas, and on and on and on. While Zaz spends most of the movie expressing his complete devotion for Roman, Roman himself is basically Jafar, lounging around in silk PJs, wearing makeup, and making every scene he's in decidedly campy. None of this is bad, exactly, it's just that when Harley refers to them as BFFs towards the end of the movie, it makes us wonder why they spend all of that time and energy building up a relationship only to brush it aside in the end. If you're going to go there with your characters, then actually go there. While their orientation might remain up to the audiences to decide, what is clear is that these two are a pair that are not to be reckoned with, as one particular face-cutting-off scene really proves. That's a hard no from us on all things face removal related, thank you. Aside from their history in the comic books together, it's pretty clear that these characters are vastly different than they are in the source material, and that the combination of the actors, the the writing and the direction has created something completely new. Whatever their dynamic, and however, make that if ever we see them again, we really can't wait. Messina's Zaz is a super interesting character, and while he added to Birds of Prey, we didn't really get to see that much of him outside of his relationship with Black Mask. We would love a Zaz origin story, or to see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman, possibly Robert Pattinson's new Batman. We have no idea if he could show up in that movie or not, but that is definitely a story that we would rush to the theaters to check out. Zaz is a complicated and terrifying character, and one who is so outwardly psychotic that it's hard to sympathize with. But that also makes for some seriously compelling viewing, and an actor like Messina definitely has the chops to take him wherever he needs to go. Yeesh, that is one scary guy. I wasn't the only Damon Gotham looking for emancipation.
What do you think about Zaz, now knowing all that we do? Would you ever watch a movie that was led by him? Or would you do so, but only if it was taken on by a different actor? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our latest videos.